I'd like to show you something I've been working on, a prototype virtual reality-based word processor that I call Word Reality. But first, why make a word processor in VR at all? Given that words are two-dimensional forms, what possible benefit could there be to working with them in VR? I have two answers to that, the first being purely pragmatic. There are things that VR is obviously great for, things like urban design, telesurgery, and 3D sculpting and modeling, but even within these domains, we'll need to perform more traditional computing tasks opening file browsers, writing and editing texts, or following hyperlinks. To get the best out of the medium, we're going to have to find ways of performing these subtasks to support our primary activity. Second, and maybe more importantly, this is totally new territory. We just don't know how good word processing can be once it's in VR. Word processing, and digital knowledge work in general, emerged from computing deeply embedded in a range of material and technical constraints, like the idea of a printed page, the typewriter-style keyboard, and the visual display of a small computer screen. None of these constraints apply anymore. It's time to consider what works best for human beings, and for the task at hand. What should we do, now that we can do anything? But this is supposed to be a demo, so let's get into Word Reality and start using it. Here it is. I'm using an HTC Vive here, and work by pointing my Vive controllers at objects in the world, like this one here, the new document icon. If I point my controller at it and pull the trigger, I get a new document fragment as my active object. While I'm holding down the trigger, I can move the fragment and release the trigger to place it. Now I'll sit down at the keyboard to start typing. Because it's so hard to find real objects when you're in a virtual world, I've got a small portal to reality placed right at the location of my keyboard. I can see where my hands are in relation to the keyboard, so I can type in the VR environment. This fragment is at monitor height, but I could also lean back and put it above me like the screen in a zero-gravity workstation. I could also work on two documents side by side, or use a document per paragraph, one idea each and spread them all out around me. I like this phrase. I think I'll keep a copy around. In word processing, we make heavy use of the now familiar concept of cut-copy-paste, but the magic invisible clipboard that underpins it doesn't actually make a lot of sense and it's easy to lose track of what's in the clipboard at any given time. In VR, we can do much better. We've got the space to keep all of the information available at all times. If we want a copy, just make a copy. If we want to cut a document, we can actually cut it into separate fragments that we can move around in space to get a sense of how they look and feel next to each other. I like these ideas together, so I'm going to merge this fragment into that one. I'm thinking about using this as a tweet, so I need to keep an eye on the word and character count. To do that, I can look to my right and see that it's this many words and that many characters. If I select this other fragment, it updates with the new numbers. This meta information is always available to the right of my active document and always up to date because I can rely on that. I can learn to use it by reflex without even thinking. Word Reality has done a great job of helping me write this, and now it's time to get it over to Twitter. But you may notice there's no save button. That's because these days we really use save to mean several different things. This environment is persistent, so there's no need to save for my own sake. But sometimes we use the term save to mean make something to give to somebody else. In that case, we should just call out send and use that metaphor directly. I can drag my document fragment to the envelope icon and pass it straight along to the person or place it needs to get to. This is similar to one of the original GUI concepts, pioneered way back in Xerox Star. There, icons represented not just applications or documents, but operations and destinations. You could print a document by dragging its icon to the icon for the printer, and send a document by dragging it into the in-tray of a colleague. Another thing you might notice is that up here, I have a range of images that have just popped up. If I hover over them, I see a tooltip which corresponds to what we were writing just before. Word reality is constantly fetching these pictures as I type, just in case I want them for inspiration or reference. The images turn up without distraction outside of your field of view, but again, because you know they're there, you can just turn to them if you want to see them. But just because typing brings them into existence doesn't mean we need to keep them around. If I don't select or move them, they'll just disappear on the next search. But I do like this guy, so I think I'll keep him around. When I trigger a new search by entering more text, he's going to stay, while these others will be dismissed. But say I'm getting sick of using a keyboard for text entry, and just want to dictate my thoughts. I can just use voice input. I pick up the dictaphone, press the D-pad, and start talking. 
So now, if I say, the future is a terrifying unknown, it builds that fragment at the position of the dictaphone when I started it. Perfect. We've got creating and editing documents, invoking images from a search. The next thing we can do is pick elements from a personal collection. Here's my camera roll, which has a few family shots from when we got our Vive, as well as a recent trip to NASA Ames to see the VR displays there. As I swipe up on the D-pad, you can see a circle emerging. That shows the sphere of influence of the roll. As I keep swiping up, the circle gets bigger and the photos move out. They expand up to a point and then begin to spread out. Now I can stand in the center of a constellation of my photos. This is great for getting a thumbnail-style view of everything in here, and I can drag each one around, but it's kind of ungainly to do that just to get a decent look at each one. Instead, I've got this Explorer, which acts as a kind of lens on the photos and documents in space. They're repelled and magnified by the Explorer, so you can get a clear view of each thing you're looking at. Okay, now that I've taken a look through what's in the roll, I'm going to grab this shot of my daughter with our Vive, and this one of an early prototype head-mounted display at Ames. Now that these two shots are out of the sphere of influence of the roll, I can collapse it down and dismiss the photos. I'm also going to clean some of this other stuff up. To delete items, I drag them into the trash can. Or, if there's a lot of stuff to get rid of, I can grab the trash can and scoop the items up with it. Now my workspace is clear, so I've got room to think about what I'm writing. This is starting to look like a timeline of VR development. Here's the past. This is the present, and right now, the future is a big question mark. Okay, so I've got text where I want it, I've grabbed the images I want from my collection and searches from the internet, and they're arranged in a way that gives a sense of how they're related, but I'd like to make those links explicit. To do that, I grab the pencil tool. I can use it to do a free sketch of that question mark I was mentioning, but I can also use it to draw links between pictures and labels as well as express the hierarchy of information I'm trying to get across here. So that's it, VR productivity. This is a demo of real functionality, running on current-gen hardware and actually inside a browser. The future is going to be even better, but to get to the technology we'll be using in 50 years' time, we need to figure out the steps to get us there, which developments are going to help us, and what's holding us back.